Hello and welcome to the March 7th, 2023 Full Birch Moon Crystal Grid Build. I don't know where you guys live, but here in the Pacific Northwest, it's definitely moving towards that spring energy. And with that in mind, a lot of what we're working with this month is going into that kind of spring cleaning mindset. A lot of filtering out what's unneeded, getting rid of anything that may have built up over the long winter months. Um, helping us to reorganize and declutter our thoughts so that we can actually focus on what needs to be focused on instead of getting distracted by these millions of nuances of different things getting in our way. And with that being said, let's take us a moment and do a quick setting of intention and calling in of the directions. We're going to start with the east, to the wind, and the dragon's wing, to new beginnings, to seeking knowledge in all things, being aware and awakened, open and free, to moving with ease, all the things with wings that are coming to life now that the cold weathers are gone. We welcome you in. To the south. To the phoenix's fire. The warmth of the sun passion of the heart and the fuel that drives our ambitions of all the things that give us purpose and confidence as well as that ability to not be afraid to be a little chaotic and destructive when need be we welcome you in To the earth, to the serpent scale, to the grounds beneath our feet, to all the things great and small that have come from this great mother earth, from all the fruits and vegetables and plants and everything that's ever existed, all that makes life so, all that have come before us, all that are here, and all that will ever be, we come and we welcome you in. And lastly, to the north, to the waters, to the emotions and depths of the sea, to the vastness of our wisdom that's so far out of reach and yet right there at hand. To that movement of, of emotion. To that fluid that gives all life its rhythm. We welcome you in. To the moments of here and now present that is, that was, and that hasn't yet come, to all moments that are simultaneous and non-existent, to everything that's happening all at once, that open space we bring and call you in. To the great spirits above us, 
to the ancient ones beneath us. All that come before and all that watch us, we welcome you in. We bring you in to help call us peace. All right. Now let's kind of take a step into what we're going to be working with. Firstly, if we're going to be doing any kind of cleaning, any kind of filtering, we must always think to reach out to our friend of Shungite, this lovely stone found in Russia. It's a filter on the highest level. It can absorb radiation, electromagnetic frequencies, microwaves. When put into water, it can get out microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, pollutants, pesticides, and free radicals. It can help to bring life back to things that have been recently cleansed and have been spent of their energy. Shungite is highly protective, highly grounding, and just helps to boost our physical wealth and health health and well-being. Next we should go over to one of my personal favorites, Amber. Amber is another cleanser, another filter. It absorbs negative energy, turning into positive. It helps to stimulate the intellect and the crown, activating our kundalini, connects our consciousness to the universal protection, and helps. And when it's burned, it can clear an area of impurity and disease. That's what it's been used for thousands of years ago. In ancient temples and ruins, they would burn amber. It's tree sap. We've seen it leaching off of all types of trees during the year. Some of my favorite comes from the uh, conifer coniferous ones like the pines and cedars. Those make some lovely amber scents. Next, as we're doing all of this cleaning and cleansing, you need to remember to do so with integrity and intention and not to get rid of things because we're ashamed of them or we're told to by other people. It's like our integrity is most important. That's why we're going to connect everything with Azure in here. This is self-integrity in a stone. Every, it removes energy and replaces it at the same time. And that what it's replacing it with is yourself, your self-esteem, your self-worth, your self-confidence. That way you're not needlessly filling it up with things that don't matter like vices and addiction and wasting money on useless things. Like you fill that space with yourself, you don't need those anything else. Next we're going into calcite. We have it of different colors and different variations. Each color, yes, has a different specific use to a different chakra, but what we're focusing on most partic particularly is that it's an amplifier of energy, but it also cleanses energy. So it helps to clean things out, helps to increase our higher awareness, the metaphysical abilities, so that we can do more of a spiritual cleanse as well as we're doing physical, mental, and emotional cleanses. This helps to connect our emotion to our intellect and facilitate that emotional in intellect, helps us make wiser decisions, especially when we begin to lose hope, when logic doesn't seem to be the only answer 
or emotions overwhelm us to the point where we can't make decisions. You need the healthy marriage of both because of that double refraction that calcite has. It splits light in two so you can see both sides of things. And of course, with each color, it puts that focus and that integrity into either like the solar plexus, the heart, the high heart, the throat. There's some darker ones that go towards the root and the sacral. But calcite helps to really just clean out energy. It's a calcium carbonate or yeah, something like that. And... just really helps you to slow things down as you're pulling it apart. Next, something that works very harmoniously with calcite is fluorite. And we have it in raw and polished. And also it comes in a variety of colors and very variations this is really good against disorganization so as you're cleaning and purifying everything you're reorganizing what's left to have a more functional usable space you're bringing together those disjointed aspects of your own self of your own psyche your mentality so that you can actually think clearer you can focus more and with so much that's going on in our own heads having a little bit of organization as we're clearing through everything is helpful and it also helps to empower calming and creative energy so it makes the concept of cleaning up this organization, making it into more of a creative project or an outlet than a chore and task. Because if it feels like work that you have to do, you don't want to do it. But if it's like, hey, this actually sounds a little bit fun, I can open up my space, I can clear things out, move things around, see things from a new perspective... Calcite or fluorite's great for that. Even helping you to look at it from a new perspective. And then lastly, we have zincite. This is a zinc oxide. It re-energizes the whole body, stimulating creativity and fertility. Assisting kundalini type energies, enhancing your gut instinct and intuition, instills courage to find one's own strength and stimulates the immune system. So this is kind of another like energy booster as we're going through and getting ready to do all this work and this cleansing and this clearing to be more energized about it so we have the ability and the fuel to get the jobs done that we need to do and if you feel more energized you're more willing to actually do the work than to try to push it off be like oh i'll do it tomorrow i'll do, I'll do it on another day we don't need that we need that now now is the time to start getting things going start planting things if you're a gardener this is like get the seeds started if you're going to do things by seed if it's still too cold to get things outside start pruning bushes and plants that are out there start you know switching clothes from more wintry to more springy like make them lighter and less heavy get outside a little bit more get, tap into that more natural creativity than just you know, sitting at home, waiting for things to happen. We're done waiting. February's over. We're done, you know, sitting inside and 
entertaining ourselves. Now is the time to start moving out, moving forward. So, without further ado, let's get building. So, I don't know about all of you guys, but for me, February was a very long, short month. There was this sensation and feeling of anticipation and waiting that was wanting to be alleviated. But we couldn't do things because it was cold. And then the end of the month, just reinstilled that by throwing a snowstorm at us, shutting everything down for a few days. And nothing t really tells you that. It's like, it's not quite time yet. Like a freak snowstorm. So let's take a little start here. I'm going to get the fluoride in. This is going to be a very colorful grid. It's going to definitely have that strong spring type ener like energy. Which is good because we need a boost. We need a little, a little zing after being kind of stuck inside for so long. I know I could use a little bit of a break. One of the things I love about fluorite Fluorite is it crystallizes like this. Look at that little guy. Perfect geometric harmony. I forget what the name of this is, but it's basically two pyramids butt to butt. It looks so cool. Now I'll use this time like I do every time I work with fluorite to throw in a little musing that I have. I've always found it fascinating that people t freak out about fluoride in water and how dangerous it is. Chemists will even tell you. And it's like within reason, like it all makes sense. Like, it's not a chemical you should play around with. And yet, everything that fluorite or fluoride is claimed to do, fluorite does the exact opposite. You know, it's fascinating. We'll come back to these guys.
Shungite and Amber are probably two of my favorite stones, especially when dealing with any kind of metaphysical cleaning and cleansing. One, if you just put it into the water and it absorbs it from there. The other one, you burn it and it pulls it from the air. So if you're going to combine things together to give yourself a little bit of a boost, those are two I would do, especially if it's a house cleansing or any kind of work like that. What I love about amber, sometimes they have little inclusions in it from organic material with that in there, I believe, is a spider's nest. And this is a perfect example of the different variations you can have of amber. You have the golden amber color that gives it its name. And then you have the black amber, which has a lot of carbon inclusions from leftover wood matter or particulates in the air that got dispersed as these were being formed. Now, of course, it can be numerous colors and shades. This one here is actually referred to as blue amber. You can tell when you shine a, a sunlight through it. Same with this one here. You can kind of tell that there's a bluish tinge to it. Or something like this one is clearly black. This grid, I feel it's fairly important to lay down a boundary and a barrier because when you're cleaning and filtering out energy, it means you're going to be more exposed, more vulnerable. So making sure your foundation, your borders. Your own protections are strong. Then you can make more. Then you don't have to be fearful of anything trying to take 
and disrupt your creations. Another fun thing about Shungite is it has a lovely variation known as Elite Shungite, which gives it that nice, lovely shine in comparison to its boring, dull, rougher cousin. Now, is there any real difference between them? Not really. Because if you were to take this elite Shungite and tumble it around for a little bit, it would look exactly like regular Shungite. So elite doesn't always mean better. People like to throw fancy names on things so they can jack the prices up. Okay. Zincite here is a fascinating stone because it only exists naturally in a few places in the world. One of those places, or the primary place, is New Jersey. Why New Jersey? I don't really know. Then in another one, it's a naturally unnatural occurrence. Because in an old zinc factories, where they're smelting the metal down to absorb or to make steels and appliances and all the different things you would use zinc oxides and metals for. The particulates would be going up into the fumes and then they ended up getting trapped into the cracks of the silo walls of the smoke towers mixing with the oxygen in there and it happened to create the right temperature and pressure within those cracks to have crystals form and normally i am against man-made crystals because they're they miss something. There's something that's lacking from them that occurs in natural formation that I just don't, they don't have, and I don't particularly care for. But in something like this, this is an unintended byproduct. And it's kind of cool. It's not very flashy or expensive but there are these neat little crystalline formations from little plates to little tiny crystal guys like that yeah nothing really fancy very translucent and clear. And as you can see, just like with the fluorite and the calcite, they come in so many different colors. And each of those colors work each of the different chakras just slightly differently. And if you're also curious on how exactly zincite is helpful, if it's a not very common stone. Well, think of what zinc does for the body. 
it helps with the absorption of things like magnesium and calcium. It helps with our immune systems. In general, it's just overall good for us. So, yeah. Zinc is just, again, one of those ones that we know what it does for our body. And what it does for our body physically, it does those synonymous aspects on the metaphysical and spiritual side. So, I always find that to be very fascinating and just kind of enjoyable all around. Azurine here is a personal favorite because it does, it removes and replaces energy simultaneously. Not a lot of stones do that. And if they do, they're like, they're replacing it with all these external concepts or emotions and feelings that are like these things should all be within us anyway we don't need all that additional extra but what we do need is more of ourself not in an egotistical way but in a confident proud strong worthy way we are our own worst enemies so if we can love and forgive ourselves we become our greatest strength Missing one. Hmm. I don't know about you all, but I can't wait for spring. I am excited for this season change, for this new season to be upon us. It's been a very long and trying few years and I haven't really looked forward to anything like this in a long time so to actually be looking forward to anything is exciting for me and makes me feel good <laughs> this is going to be interesting because things are going to be spaced out. That's okay. 
gives us more room to think and build and grow and play. The only thing that can truly trap us is our own limitations that we set in our own minds. The only things that hold us back are the misinterpreted beliefs of others. When we realize that most things truly don't matter, nothing is set in stone, nothing can force anything upon us. That's when we've truly become free. Empty ourselves of those expectations held on by outdated beliefs. One of those biggest outdated beliefs is where the fucking zodiac signs are. Where we are astrologically. Like, I'm not going to say people are lying to you and being like, telling you misinformation. But people are fucking lying to you and giving you misinformation. If you, any of you who do metaphysical and spiritual work, I know most of you have, like, star map apps and things that look at the actual night sky and tell you exactly where everything is. And yet, where we get told it is by these, well, I guess you could call them charlatans, snake oil salesmen, opinion pushers. That's all their fallacies, you know? It's pushing into these narratives that were created hundreds of years ago or thousands of years ago and being like, no, we don't need to change these. I mean... Granted, yes, the beliefs in astrology and all that are ancient and old belief systems. But to believe their skies don't change and haven't changed. Kind of ignorant, not going to lie. Kind of ignorant. Is we haven't been doing this anywhere near or shit. The maps and the calendars that those people were using are thousands of years old. Our own Maps of the continents and rivers change daily to believe that the sky itself is not also moving when we know this entire universe is. We can prove it with like literal science 
And people are saying like, oh, Saturn's going into Pisces. No, it's not. It's in the middle of fucking Aquarius right now. All this energy and these things people are telling you to like pay attention to. It's misleading you. It's actually diverting you from what's actually happening, where we're actually going. And it's trying to tell you that we're further ahead than we are. We're ahead of schedule. We're like... Basically, we're beyond ourselves. We're not. We got to pull ourselves back a little bit. Reel that ego in. Because we are not that far ahead. <laughs> we are not that good. And where we're going and things that are happening. Like, a lot of it's being ignored. And being not paid attention to in the context of what's actually happening. And, like, not trying to rain on people's parades or shit on people's belief systems. Because, like, if you're believing misinformation, then you're literally no better than 90% of those whack job conspiracy theorists that are Literally ruining everyone else's belief systems by pushing them to an extreme. If there's no validation and no grounding behind it, how can you even be sure of the information you're taking in as being healthy? Right? So we need to clear out information that's literally fueling our egos. And then to reorganize it, what's left, and actually see that, yes, the information about what each sign and thing stands for and symbolizes, that information is correct. Where they say things are on our birth charts and all of that, that information is wrong. And easily rectifiable. All you got to be do, do is be willing to learn a little bit more. Find out more about yourself. People may not realize it, but I actually enjoy when people get mad when I tell them they're following wrong information. And instead of even listening to what I'm trying to say, they just continually justify their own actions. And yet... <laughs> also continue to act in, you know, childish ways. Because it's like, look, just because I say like, oh, the map you're looking at is wrong, you need to get an updated one, isn't, like, I'm not telling you you're stupid. I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm just saying, it's like, information has been updated. Learn from new information. It's not that hard. I'll be right back. There we go. I'll go like this. Triple E down there.
I guarantee at some point, because this is all about organization, purification, cleansing, clearing, spring cleaning, I'm going to be coming through and adjusting and reorganizing this thing throughout the entire month. Because as you can see, especially here with the zincite, all the different colors are all mixed together. Creating a little bit of a color mess. So then things are going to start to shift and bend and flow just as we are shifting and bending and flowing. The energies that we move and that we feel, they are of us as they are a part of everything else. The universe is speaking to us. It's reaching out, telling us to embrace this flowing change be a part of it be with it and enjoy it at the same time let's give you a tip yes we shall do this Everything is always subject to change. You don't have to leave it as it is all the time. Nothing is perfect. We're constantly changing every day. Why not plan that change? Organize it. Bring it together. Show yourself some harmony and balance. Be kind to yourself. Calm down and breathe. Everything we go through, we chose. We've granted ourselves this world. We've brought forth these new beginnings and change. We are the universe. We are the planet. We are the seasons. Let us embrace them and become more united within them. This grid is a couple of my favorite combos all put together. You know, you have the amber and the shungite, the fluorite and the calcite. Amber also goes well with the zincite. Azurine's kind of an outlier, but we're using it for its integrity. It's helping to bridge the gap, pull things more together.
Life is nothing but organized chaos. The universe is evidence of this. Everything has a plan, has a meaning, has a purpose, has a vision and drive. And also remembering as we're going through moving and changing these energies, remember to take care of yourself, take care of your immune system. We are growing and evolving. That doesn't mean we're not getting sick. Viruses and allergens are evolving too. They evolve with us. So as you're going and cleaning things out, fill yourself back up with TLC, tender care, caring, self-respect, nurturing, and peace. Because we're going to be in for a ride. We wish to cultivate and harvest in the future. This is the time we go and put it all together. We are bringing this energy in. Never forget that the world wants us to thrive and grow. She has given every, us everything we need to learn that information, to grasp it, to pay attention. She does that with the seasons, the passing of the lunar cycle. The setting and the rising of the sun. She tells us when things are ready to be consumed, ready to be harvested, when not to harvest, what to harvest, what not to harvest, and not to eat, when we need to grow or build something. She shows us which trees to use because she will fall them for us. We have been given all of this information and yet society has distracted us and pulled us away from it. Pulled us away from these seasonal cycles that, you know, we need to pay attention to. Eat with these seasons. Get your body back in rhythm and in harmony with the planet. By doing that, you are now in balance and harmony with the universe. And if by doing that, you're functioning and flowing with that energy. You tap into it easier. You flow with it easier. But you have to get rid of all the excess noise and nonsense. You see, not everything has to be so loud and convoluted, trapped.
we can open our minds without deafening our souls. Paying attention to who we are without getting lost to who they want us to be. I always find it amusing to hearing these people talking about these master races and people trying to control information and the timelines and yada 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 and what do they end up doing but regurgitating the information of the timelines that they told you why don't people question that why aren't we wondering why that our apps aren't lining up with what people are trying to tell us. Why aren't people double checking or, you know, backing up their resources? Instead, it's just a bunch of people regurgitating other people's information without actually knowing and understanding what's behind it all. There's so much more that we are blind to, that we've made ourselves blind to because someone else told us. So we can clear out all of that external noise, grab the message and the meaning beneath, free ourselves from these empty desires and beliefs that do nothing for us. These insatiable longings for these constructs and structures. Like, I can't tell you the number of strong like independent feminist type women I know who are constantly vying for a man it's like I thought you were doing all this stuff so you didn't need one and then it's like oh but you're lonely and it's like okay what are you going to do about that and we're always trying to fill that space with someone else Fill it with yourself. Yeah, I know you've heard it before. We've all heard it before. We're probably tired of hearing it. But we can fill it with ourselves. And if someone's going to come along and try to pique our interest, let them. But never at the cost or sacrifice of your integrity. So before I go and seal the deal, as my good friend Chad Diamond Dan would say, miss you brother. Remember it's time to step into the spring, step into this new change, this coming light, it's getting brighter, it's getting longer, it's getting warmer. We're starting to plant. We've done the planning. Never stop planning, even as you're beginning to do. Because just because you're doing doesn't mean things won't change. So be prepared for change as it comes even if it's outside of what you've planned. And more than anything, just remember to have fun. Enjoy yourself. Have 
just have the time of your life as you're creating a new space for this new season. Yeah. May the spring warm your cold and weary bones. May you take time to reorganize and restructure your own mind and emotions, our heart and soul. Take time for yourself as we're pushing into this new energy, this new time of growth. Never forget. You're fucking awesome. Love yourself. <laughs>